there guys! Today's video is about bullet journal, bullets, and signifiers, and how I use them, um, and what I do that's a little bit slightly different than the original system, and how I use the original system, and all of that. So, um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I think you should definitely go back and watch Ryder Carroll's original bullet journal explanation video. He explains the whole system, including what the different bullets do. There are actually two different versions of that video. In the original one, what he does, here, I'm going to pull this out and show you. What he does is uh, he uses a box for a task, and then I believe he'll fill it in halfway when it is halfway completed, and then all of the way when it's completely done. And a lot of people really like that system. Um, they like the look of a filled in box. You can get really fun with colors and stuff that way. Um, but the more updated version of the video just uses a dot. And I think that makes more sense as far as calling it a bullet journal for one thing, but um, I also prefer that dot. It's just quicker to draw than trying to do a square and make it look good every single time. Um, and then what you do to mark these off is you put one line through when it's started and then a second line through when it's done and then it's an X and you know that it's handled, right? So you go and you write your whole to-do list and you've got all these dots and you can cross things off as they are completed. So what a sig, and these are like the official, the official ones. Um, then along in the same the same rows as your rapid logging um, you can put a note uh, you can put an event and then you can keep writing more to-do lists um, all in the same rapid log and then uh, the the term signifier what that means is something that's to the left of the bullet. So any of these are all called bullets. To the left of that is called a signifier. So the one that's like shown in the video is just a star. And that star means that something's important. And that's like a really easy, um, a really easy one to use. And I think like a lot of people probably do. It's definitely the one that I use the most as far as signifiers. And, uh, you can basically, he says that you can do whatever you want. You can do, you know, a question mark for research or a exclamation point for, I don't know, whatever you want it to mean. Some people get really intricate with them, um, but I tend to really just use a couple. Another thing about these bullets is you can really do whatever you want, whatever works for you. So early on when I first started bullet journaling, um, I actually added an extra bullet to the system. Um, instead of just having a, a dash for notes, I also used a little heart for some notes. And the way that I distinguished those in my mind was a, a dash was for an actionable note. Something like um, Tuesday meeting and a heart would be a non-actionable note, something like, um, love my dog, or, you know, he did something cute, whatever. That's not actionable. Um, and so the heart worked for that. And then these um, more actionable things that this Tuesday meeting, it needed to be put on my calendar. So what I would do is I would use that line and I would Put a, make it into an arrow showing that I had scheduled it in my um, in my monthly log or whatever. Um, and that I used that for like the first month of bullet journaling because I really was into looking at my daily log and saying, okay, everything here has been taken care of. This one's done. This one's migrated. This one's half done, and then migrated. This one is scheduled, and these are done. You know, and then I would look at it and go, that's great. Everything's done, and everything is in only one place. I started to decide I didn't really like the heart that much, so I kind of dropped it and now I only use dashes for notes and that's fine. Um, and sometimes I will use like a, a dot for a task for something that's like, you know, add Tuesday meeting uh, to my calendar. 
Another symbol I've used that's a non-standard, and this is only sort of temporary. Um, I did this once or twice in like a weekly spread where I had a weekly to-do list and there were, I wanted to designate certain tasks were for videos. And so I put it as a, uh, a little play button and then I filled it in when it was done. I tried this once. I didn't really like it that much, but it's an option, you know, I just want to say. Um, another thing that I do do more often is that as I'm going through, I have, you know, my different tasks like clean this, um, you know, read something, blah, blah, blah. And I'll put a box next to an errand. So I'll look at my list and I can quickly see this is something that I need to leave the house for or that I need to look at this on my way out of the door at the office so that I can stop and pick up groceries on the way home or something like that. When I'm out of the house, these are the things I'm doing. So I have errands as squares and dots for any other task. Um, as far as signifiers go, I definitely, like I said, I use the star for important stuff, right? Something I can't forget, I'll put a star. Um, I will often put a little arrow next to a task um, and that just designates that it's something to do at home, that it's something like clean a room or work on something on my computer or whatever it is, something that's not, uh, that's like sp location specific, right? And that's pretty much it. I don't really like to get too complicated with it because if you ask me, I think the first thing that tells you that your uh, system of bullets and signifiers is too complicated is if you have to write it down. I see a lot of people in their bullet journal flip throughs and no offense to any of them. These are gorgeous pages, but they'll have a key at the front and it goes like, Ooh, how pretty. And then it's like decorated. And then they're like, okay, this means a task. And this is useful for when you're showing somebody else like this, I'm, I'm showing you, but I don't have any of this written down in my bullet journal for reference for myself, because I firmly believe that if you have to write down your key in order to remember it, it is too complicated to use. On the same vein, like I said, a lot of people will um, get really intricate with the kind of signifiers that they use. They'll have, you know, like, oh, this is something that needs to be done at the house. And this is something that I need to post a picture of on Instagram. And um, this is something that I need to remember when I'm praying or like uh, lots of different things. And it's great, like if that works for you. But I feel like if if it gets into the point where you're like, writing, drawing little pictograms and it takes all of that. And I think these, you kind of have to go back to the key and go, what is that even, what is that doodle anyway? Um, it's probably more complicated than you need. I would say stick to no more than maybe five signifiers. And even then, I think that's probably a lot. Um, really just use it as it comes and just don't make it complicated because the bullet journal system is all about being quick and efficient. Um, so just use whatever makes sense to you. Like if using a star doesn't mean important to you, then it's not going to mean important to you. Like don't force it, use what makes sense. Um, and also finally is that you are not beholden to your system at all even if you decide to write your key in the front of your journal, you don't have to stick to it that way. If one day using a star means that it's an important task and you can turn the page and the next day using a star means that it's something that you're designating, you're delegating to someone else. And then you turn the page again and the next day star means uh, something that you need to buy. Like, do whatever makes sense to you that day, because one day you're going to be at the office doing, you know, everything's on your computer. The next day you're going to be running around doing errands. And the day after that, you're going to be at home trying to clean the whole house at once. Like your, your planner should be able to adapt with you. That's why it's a bullet journal. It's because it adapts with you and it becomes what you need it to be on any given day. This is turning into kind of a bit of a preachy video and I'm sorry about that. Um, 
like basically you do you and if you want to reject everything that I've just said then that is what makes your bullet journal your bullet journal so I say power to you um, that's all I'm really talking about just wanted to show you sort of the the signifiers and the bullets that I personally use that are a little bit different but again um, check out the link to the original writer Carol video down below and I think whenever you start to feel overwhelmed by your system, um, whether it's having too many different kinds of bullets to keep track of or anything else, I think it's helpful to go back to that original system and kind of reset and figure out how you want to do things. So that's where I will leave you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.